One by one the nations begin to sing along. Their cries for liberation become a victory song. What a mighty sound, the song of the free. When those who were bound declare liberty. What a joyful noise through history resound. When hope. Sing it from our heart Like those who came before us And made us who we are Till all the world can hear us And dares to take a stand For those who need it most
join me in, in the Word of God today in the book of Mark, chapter 1, verse 16 to 20, title of my message, Where Was Dad? And as he walked, this is Jesus, as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. They immediately, that's awesome, they immediately left their nets, followed him. And when he had gone a little farther from there, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were also in the boat, mending their nets. And immediately he called them. They left their father, Zebedee, in the boat with the hired servants, and they went after Jesus. Going to learn just a little bit this morning about this man, Zebedee, the father of James and John. There's not a whole lot in the, in the New Testament about him. I guess Zebedee would be kind of like the people you meet every day in your, in your circulation in town whatever you're doing, somewhere in society. He was a man of means. He had a successful business. Several times the word tells us that he had servants, hired servants. His business was commercial fishing. His sons naturally followed him in the trade and were working with dad in the business. In the text that I read to you, we notice that the sons went with Jesus. They left the ship they left the business, they left their employees. In fact, they left all behind, everything, to follow Jesus Christ. The Gospels have a lot to say about Zebedee's sons. We're going to look into their lives in just a moment. They became a famous family in biblical history. James and John, sons of, Deb of Zebedee. First century history says a lot about them, but and their mom as well. But it doesn't say much about daddy. All we have about daddy is this short little text in the Bible. James became the first martyr of all the apostles. John became a writer. His gospel is one of the most loving and tender books in the Bible, the gospel of John. When people come to Christ, one of the soul winning uh, person that might lead them to the Lord or a personal evangelism worker usually refers them to the book of John. Where should I start reading the Bible? Start in the book of John. John wrote a great book and he wrote three letters, first, second, and third John, very active in the ministry. They climbed, James and John, sons of Zebedee, climbed the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus. They were there at the cross when Jesus was crucified. It was John who Jesus asked from the cross to take care of his mother, and he did. He took care of Mary until she died at a very uh, full life in Ephesus. She was part of the church of Ephesus, which John, uh, the beloved, pastored in later years after his exile on the Isle of Patmos. And he took care of Jesus, his mother. He was in good shape physically. He must have been because he outran Peter to the tomb. He was the first one to see the grave clothes. First one to observe that the tomb was empty. Zebedee's children, James and John, were history makers. They stood at the shore that wonderful morning in the north part of Sea of Galilee, they were in the ship. Jesus had, had gone from their midst, and they saw this man on the shore saying, come on over and have some breakfast. And Jesus was there cooking breakfast for them. And it was John who recognized him. Jesus said, children, have you any meat? And, and John, the son of Zebedee, looked up, and he said, it is the Lord. And you know that story. If you don't, you can read it when you go home today. These boys of Zebedee experienced much 
as they walked and talked with Jesus. But where was dad? What was he doing? What happened to him? His sons partook of the thrill of walking and working with Jesus. But all we know of Zebedee was they left their father in the ship with the employees. Not knocking Zebedee, please understand that. Just using him as an illustration today. Dad had a business to handle. He was running the family business. He was a hardworking man. Goodbye, boys, he said. And he let them go, and they're gone. And he stayed with the business. And he missed the greatest opportunity on earth, the opportunity to follow Christ. I wonder how many times when experiences came along when Jesus performed a miracle or feeding of the 5,000 or, or whatever it was that Jesus was doing. I wonder how many times one, one of them might say to the other, I sure wish dad was here. I don't know. What about his wife? We know her in the Bible. They call, they call her the mother of Zebedee's children. She chose Christ. Now, I'd like to imagine, I think I've known people like Mrs. Zebedee. She was kind of pushy, even a little foolish sometimes, but she wanted her boys to become something. She loved her boys. She wanted the best. They had to amount to something at one point, she actually uh, confronted Jesus about their position in his kingdom. She made it known. It seems like she even gave Jesus a piece of her mind. But there was no doubt about her experience and the depth of her experience. And she was there, the mother or the wife of Zebedee, the mother of Zebedee's boys. She was there at the foot of the cross on crucifixion day. Her faith was genuine. She was real. And her faith touched the whole family. Except Daddy. Where's Dad? What is he doing that's so important, more important than what the rest of the family is doing? He's fixing his nets. He doesn't look up. His mind is on profit. He has employees to manage got to keep my eye on the market, got to know the times to throw out the nets for a, a big catch of fish. His fishing business was his life. Not wrong, I'm not saying that's wrong, but I'm saying priorities seemingly were not there the way they could have been. I believe he was a good man. Maybe he was a pleasant man. Maybe he was well-liked in town. He was commendable. He didn't fuss when his wife got religion. A lot of people fuss when my wife got religion. I know some people like that. Good old, they, they just don't want to have anything to do with their, their wife's God. Zebedee didn't fuss. He didn't try to keep his boys from the ministry. He may have even been proud of them in the background. I have met men in the same position as Zebedee who have caused grief and abuse to their family because of their faithfulness to church, faithfulness to Royal Rangers, to missionettes, to involved in the kingdom of God. He could have said, I'm not home much. You could at least be here on Sunday mornings. You need to, you don't need to think religion day and night. You don't go to bars like you used to. Whatever happened to you? I want some attention. Guys like that could get pretty mean. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but I'm sure many of us know someone like that. Being in the ministry now here for 33 years, we have, we have encountered men like that a few times and, and de endeavored to pray them through to the, to the Lord, and some we were successful. As far as we know, Zebedee did not falter for following Jesus. He was a pleasant man, a hard-working man, and I wonder what happened to him. Where's Zebedee? Well, he's busy mending nets. I want to look for just a moment with you today at what Zebedee missed and try to apply it 
to 2017 in our lives today. Nothing wrong with taking care of business. Nothing wrong with mending nets. I guess there was a few times there he wished he had new nets because pretty often you read in the Bible they, they were mending their nets. But they were busy. Good, honorable work. People got to eat. Food business is important. I'm all for it. We need businessmen. So I'm not down on Zebedee for sure. I'm using him as a point of reference to remind you that life's greatest tragedy is to miss Jesus Christ. That's a little sample of what their work must have been like, an artist's rendition of Jesus when he was calling James and John, working hard, but life's greatest tragedy is to miss Christ. To never get to know him when those who you love know him. When those who you love best have made him a priority and you never got to know him, it's a tragedy. Zebedee's too busy. His sons know him, but he's too busy. He doesn't have time. Some say this Jesus stuff is for women and kids and old people. Some have that mentality. To me, it's heartbreaking. Too busy with the trivial things of life to get to know Jesus. It's not a time-consuming experience to know Jesus. Spend some time with him every day. I tell you this often from this pulpit. Set a time when it's best for you. For me, it's in the morning. And for many people, it's in the morning. But spend an extra, get up an extra 10 minutes, 15 minutes early. Spend some time with Jesus every day. Every day. Let me say it again. Every day. <laughs> There's an old song that says, take time to pray every day. And when you're heading home, he'll show you the way, if you know the Lord. So I encourage you to take time for Jesus. It's heartbreaking. As a pastor, many times when you realize it could be so different if you invest your time in the Lord. If you had your choice today, of all the men of history that you've read about or learned about or know about, who would you like to meet personally? Who? Job, would somebody say? That'd be interesting to meet Job. I know a lot of people think that they're Job. Oh, I feel like Job today. The other day we went to, uh, we were invited to Sight and Sound and we, we revisited Jonah. Jonah, and, and they, they depict it so beautifully there in the, in the belly of the whale and what's going on in the belly of that whale. And, and uh, one day I want to talk to Jonah. What was it like? What did it smell like in there? You know, dead fish all over the place, half digested fish. So maybe I'll interview Jonah someday. I don't know. Maybe would you like to meet Abraham or Moses? or Joshua, or Julius Caesar, Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, Jack Nicholas, all famous people. <laughs> Who would you choose? Someone asked Barbara Walters that a while back, and she said, if I could pick any person in history to interview, I would pick Jesus of Nazareth. That's what she said. Zebedee had that chance. He threw it away. He ignored it. He felt like what he was doing was more important. Just think. Zebedee missed hearing the greatest sermon that was ever preached, personally. The Sermon on the Mount. His boys were there, but he was too busy. John and James heard it. Mom heard it. Dad was too busy. He never got around to it. The family went to meetings. 
he figured, probably figured there's enough religion in my boys and my wife that I don't need it. He missed the miracles. He missed that. Never got to, to see the power of God changing lives for eternity. I remember when it was legal to have cigarette commercials. How many ever heard the commercial, I'd walk a mile for a camel? That's an old commercial, but people that smoked back in those days, that was a commercial. I'd walk a mile for a camel. People would walk a mile for a camel, but not take one step to see a life changed by faith in Jesus Christ. I, I would go to any length, and I mean this with all my heart, and I've proven it in my life, to see an outcast restored or a morally crippled person cleaned up. To see somebody completely rebuilt by Christ at an altar of prayer so that they can return to society as a youthful citizen. Useful citizen. I guess I would have to say today in reflection, and it's a day of reflection for me because tonight we're going to look a little bit about my history in music and, and the way God directed my paths over the years. I remember as an 18-year-old kid in Philadelphia, the youth group that we had was very involved. One of them is here, Judy Franklin. Her dad was my Sunday school teacher when I was a teenager. We would go on one Saturday night a month to Fraser's Mission. That's down in the Skid Row area of Philadelphia. How many of you are old enough to remember Fraser's Mission? Or Robert Fraser, the blind evangelist on the radio? I know the Lord will make a way. Anybody remember that? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You remember Judy? <laughs> no, they had a mission. And we would go there as teenagers. And we would take sandwiches. We would have a service. We would, the guys would come in, know they were going to sandwich. And we would have a service. We wouldn't give them the food till after the service. And we would play and sing. And, and, uh, and then we would hand out sandwiches to these men. Once a month we did that. And it gave me a passion for hurting people. Today, they're called homeless people. Back then, anybody know what they were called back then? Bums. <laughs> Tramps and bums. We would feed them. And I had a heart for them, and, and, and I felt sorry for them. But it, was a, it would develop a, a passion in my life to see people's lives changed. Morally crippled people cleaned up. Someone rebuilt by Christ at an altar of prayer and through the faith of, of workers that cared. Come back to society as a useful citizen. Hundreds, thousands saw Jesus do that regularly, but not Daddy. He was back at the ship. He never left the boat. He could have been at Bethany. How often do you see the dead raised? He could have been there with Mary and Martha and Lazarus and his boys when Lazarus was raised from the dead. Everybody felt their loss. Lazarus had died. Jesus came and Jesus wept. And then they heard Jesus say, Lazarus, come out of that grave. And he came out wrapped in in grave clothes. Zebedee missed that. He also missed the cross. He was too tied down by the cares of life. And I'm just giving you an analogy here. I'm not saying this is historically correct. But too tied down by the cares of life. And it cost him a lot. He thinks the world would stop if he's not doing what he's been doing. Too busy for a trip to the foot of the cross. That meant so much to his boys and his wife. 
but I've got quotas to meet. I've got schedules to keep. I have to tell you today, there are many today when they face the Lord will regret the times that they didn't give to the Lord. Mr. Zebedee, you got, Jesus died for you. It's very important that you get to know him. He paid my debt completely. Golgotha became the sweetest place on earth. For it was there he bought my victory. What does that mean to you, Mr. Zebedee? It was a dark day in history. The blackest day. And I agree, but I got employees to run and important things to think about. And Zebedee missed the empty grave. Both of his sons saw it. I would give a thousand boats to have seen that empty grave with my own eyes back then when it happened. I've seen it several times since then. And when we go to Israel this year, again, we'll, we'll go there. I go into the grave and see the place where Jesus laid and celebrated. We, have, we serve communion right outside of the empty tomb in the garden there in Jerusalem. But these boys ran there and they saw the empty grave and saw the guards and the angels. Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, he is risen. I want to tell you today, there are thousands of people like Zebedee, many that you meet every day. Their 70 or 80 years on earth are gone and they missed life. They missed the joy of living. Life is more than recreation or business or housekeeping. I mean, his wife's in church, his sons are in the ministry, but he's too busy. Never looks up, keeps on fixing his nets. And let me bring this home here. I know Zebedee's today who would spend more on a sports event for one in one night than they would give to a missionary in a year. They would give to the work of the Lord in a whole year. They'd give to God in a year. They'll get up on a cold, rainy morning and go fishing or hunting. 5 a.m., and be horrified, horrified if you ask them to get up at nine o'clock and go to church for an hour and a half. Why should I be in church? I'll tell you why. You're the head of the house, Dad. <laughs> you ought to lead. Your wife changed her name for you to become your, to, to use your name because she trusted you to lead. Your children are known by your name. The property most of the time is in your name. You ought to be the first one in the house of the Lord and in the home to move toward God. Or are you letting your wife set the example? Zebedee lost his chance. Perhaps, I'm not his judge, but just suppose, just suppose It's all right. I don't want you to miss what I'm going to fix and to say. That's for me. Tell them I'm busy. There you go. Just suppose this. I want to give you something to think about, to imagine before I close in prayer. Just suppose in a Christless eternity, someone would say to Zebedee, aren't you the father of John the Revelator? What are you doing here? And his answer will have to be, I was too busy mending nets. Too busy in business. Too busy in pleasure and life to really follow the one who gives life. Who is life. So who is Zebedee today? 
He's the man who is never here to lead his family to the altar. Never kneel with his wife in prayer. Never have time for working with the children or the rangers or Bible study. Glad to have a Christian wife, good kids, wonderful, but that's not for me. I hope when your family stands before the Lord, they won't say, as James and John may have said often, I sure wish Dad was here. I wish he could see this. Wish he could see this empty grave and know that Jesus is alive. That's my thoughts about Zebedee today and for dads. Would you stand with me, please? I'd like for, you know, we have a special gift for the dads after the service in the back. It's edible. But I'd like for all the dads that are here to come front. Just want to have a special prayer for you, if you will, please. Come on down, dads. And if I offended you today, I'm glad. Because Jesus needs a few good men. Hallelujah. Can I reach out and touch another, another father? And let's pray that God will just do a, a, a life-changing work in your lives today. Thank you, Lord. Father, we, Hello. Father, we lift up our fathers to you. Yes, we Lord Jesus. Our, the experienced, the wise, the discerning. We lift them up to you, Lord. We lift up our all the opportunities they have to pour into us, to yes. teach us, to mold us, to help us grow as to one day be fathers in our own. Lord, we lift them up that you continue to pour into our lives and draw them close to you. Oh, yes. Teach them to be a father yes, as you're a father to them. Thank you, Teach Jesus. them to love their children as you love them. Model in their house homes, protect their house homes, provide for their family. Lord, it is only through you that they can be the men of God the providers for their homes is only through you by knowing your word by their relationship with you that they can continue to love their wives as they need to be loved to love their children to show them grace to show them forgiveness when they made mistakes thank you lord hallelujah lord even as their kids grow up and move out and have kids of their own let them continue to be fathers and grandfathers and great grandfathers and allow them to name. teach each of the generations that come after them lord let their wisdom be spread across each generation to help that next generation during each of their seasons. Praise God. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let them continue to pass the baton of discipleship onward to each of the generations afterwards. And for the fathers that are here today, let them go out to those to, that are fatherless and be fathers to them. Lord, let them reach those whose fathers have dropped the baton. Let them reach the children, the, the parents who are absent at homes, whether emotionally or yes, physically. Lord. Let Thank them be you, a Jesus. friend to those in need and display what it's like to be Jesus. Let them be Jesus in their homes and in their communities. Mm -hmm. Lord, strengthen them. Give them a strong backbone to be courageous and bold. Thank you, Lord. Let them know what is right and wrong at their workplace. Let them know what it, when it is right to talk about you, to share you, mm -hmm. and to have the words to preach you when needed. Lord, let them be held accountable to both their friends and their families. Mm -hmm. And let them finish the race yes, strong Lord, and courageous and as hot and passionate in their love for you as the day that they first committed their lives to you. Amen. 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 Thank you, George.